I think at the end of the day, like treat people like human beings, right? I think that sometimes there can be power plays and power struggles. And I think that if you, um, if you know that you're in a position of power and you are sort of actively discriminating against someone, like you need to have a personal check-in, right? I, I think it really comes down to just general, like be an adult, um, treat people with respect and regard everyone from mm -hmm. the out the trash to the person that's sitting across the table from you writing your paycheck. Um, you know, I, I think it really is a is a human question on, on how we treat people in general. And if and if you're if you're not a great person, like that that's something that no training program mm -hmm. can, it really is about like self-reflection on how you show up in the world. Um, and from a programming standpoint, I think that, you know, it's 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 being okay with uncomfortable conversations, um, ensuring that you are looking at and tapping talent and really seeing people because a lot of times the same voices will kind of always be heard. And I think that if you also kind of go to people and just say like, what should I do? What should I do? It sometimes can almost be discriminatory in and of itself. Cause it's like, I can't solve all the problems for the entire race at this, at this company. There's so many other people to involve in this decision-making process around what kind of programming we may need or what the needs are. Um, and so I think that again, like that data collection component is super significant. You know, if there's reviews that you're giving to employees, how do you give reviews? How do, you, how do your employees give reviews for their experience? What kind of survey are you designing, you know, on an anonymous level so that people will feel, you know, will feel comfortable with participating where you can like learn about like how are people experiencing, you know, the culture of your company? Do they feel hurt? Do they feel that it's a safe space for women, minorities, um, people uh, who identify as LGBTQI plus, you know, are you getting that feedback on a regular basis? And then once you do receive that feedback, um, are you are you actively um, are you actively and passionately saying, okay, clearly there's some challenges here. Um, let's go about you know figuring out how to to work towards solving them. And then you know identifying you know some some people who want to take on a leadership role um, in terms of helping to create programming or conversations that can be had um, or training that can be had you know internally. Um, I think there's so many different levels and it definitely is a process. It's not a one size fits all, but it's definitely a process. Um, I think uh, sec secondarily, what was this, what was the second question? Oh, it was it was uh, not just for leaders, but just for you know, it starts with the people, okay. right? How how are we all um, being more inclusive and more caring towards everybody that we're working with? And I think again, you know, kind of going back to this, like, how can you be better? How can you do human better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I know that, you know, some of the challenges I've always had with working on, you know, all male teams has just been being talked over or my work being questioned or what have you. And I think that, you know, when, you know, when other men in the room can step up and say, hey, like Sherelle's idea wasn't completed or I'm referring to someone else's work and saying, hey, you no, know, this person did a great job on this. I think we should really consider like what their thoughts or something like it's like it's that sponsorship and passing the mic. It is saying like, hey, when you're presented with an opportunity and something that you don't necessarily need. Um, is there someone else within your network, within your immediate network, a coworker that you really admire their work that, you know, you know, often does not get that recognition? Can you pass it off and say, hey, you know what? Thanks for, you know, thanks for this, but I think such and such will be, you know, a better fit. Um, you should really talk to them and here's why. And I think that those are kind of very simple ways mm -hmm. to kind of pass the baton and just say like, let me recognize someone that hasn't been recognized and not see it as like a charity, right? Like, and also don't go around with this like complex of savior where, oh, look how great I am. I'm so, you know, passionate yeah. about like being an ally to women and minorities. Um, I think it's also, you know, being able to be in those spaces, you know, when hard conversations are, are being had and just kind of being quiet as well. Um, and then also talking to some of your other male colleagues or checking behavior and just saying, hey, like, you know, I think that was a little insensitive um, or, you know, you know, again, like I, I think especially when it comes to families. Right. I think when people who have families, it can be a challenge to like maybe have to work because your kid is sick and you have to pick them up. But being sensitive to the fact that like life happens, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and don't make people feel further ostracized because of their responsibility. So how do you, how do you ensure that like, it's a safe space, even for someone to tell, to talk to you about like, Hey, this is what's going on at home or, you know, what have you, I have to leave. Can you cover for me? Or, you know, what have you, like, it can be frustrating, especially if in the middle of a project, but the reality is like, we're not saving lives here. Right. <laughs> so <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yep. That's right. 
Yeah. How do you give people a little bit more grace and maybe you just say like, hey, I'll send you a date after the meeting just mm-hmm. so you're kind of in the loop or what have you. I'll send you my notes from the meeting. Um, and, you know, and, and, and again, like I know every workplace is different. I know every relationship is different. You don't always have to like or be best friends with your colleagues. Um, and so there is some bar- boundaries and barriers that you put between your personal life and your your work life. Um, but I think just in general, like hearing people, seeing people, acknowledging people, um, I think those things are, are kind of great places to start. Um, but definitely finding ways where you can, um, where you know that if, if you have the upper hand or the advantage, you know, based on whatever it is, um, that you're also helping to point in other directions to give people opportunity. Um, and it might even just be like, hey, there's a new there's a new team member that just joined. And like, how do you help them further acclimate or like, hey, want to grab coffee or, you know, hey, like I'm about to work on this thing. It might be a great learning opportunity for you. Are you interested um, in, you know, in participating? Uh, it might just be a great way to like bond and connect. Um, you know, I remember I had some coworkers who invited me to go golfing. I don't golf. I don't do the sports. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like I, I ended up not going just because I had other plans, but yeah. I felt about being invited mm. um, so i think to you know also just standing up for people you know again in a respectful way in in a very much um in a very much um professional way as well where like hey you know and, and sometimes it may have to be a side conversation um but I, I think that you know if we all kind of do a little bit of our part um perhaps it makes a difference for someone else's experience and you know again like you know, the workforce is about working with other people with different kinds of personalities. Some of us have off days. Some of us, you know, may have had mm-hmm. a death, a parent that died. A lot of us deal with various, like, you know, mental anxieties or what have you. Um, I think it's about giving people grace. And and I think also just being much more aware, you know, paying attention to the room, seeing how power dynamics are working when you're in that conference room. Who's who's being, you know, spoken to as like a, a, contri- like a contributor? And then kind of who's being spoken to as though, like, you should just be lucky to be. Those are very different kinds of tonalities. Um, and, and we fill them, you know, even if you can't always identify them, I think it's called like the unknown thought um, or the unthought known or something like that. It's kind of like all that hidden subtext. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interactions. It's like being being weary of those things and being aware and finding out ways to how to like divert some of that. Um, again, it's not your responsibility alone, but it definitely is our responsibility to step in where, where we can identify that's taking place. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog. The URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link, which is found in the description of this video.